Bible Now with Apostle Guillermo Maldonado. When I was in jail, I, you know, my dad came to visit me and told me to, you know, read the Bible and do everything. So there was a desire in me to change. While I was in jail, I read the Bible and everything. But the last day I was there, I was already talking about going back to doing the same thing, to smoking and doing drugs and everything. But God had another plan because he sent someone to speak to me. I am a pastor's kid, and my parents divorced when I was two at the time that my dad wasn't a pastor yet. So basically, my dad was absent for most of my life because, you know, he wasn't around. So I grew up with lack of identity, and that's kind of like the root cause as to why I got into drugs. When I was in the whole party scene and the drug life, you know, I was the type of person that I would smoke every day. You know, I would smoke, you know, weed, marijuana every single day. You know, it got to the point I would take in it by myself. And I found myself in a deep hole that I didn't know how to get out of. And one day I prayed and I asked God to help me because I thought there was no hope for me. My family didn't really know I was even doing drugs because I would put on a mask every time I was around them. But when I was with my friends, I was wild, completely crazy person that was always go out and do crazy things. But I was very selfish and prideful, full of hate and full of anger inside to, towards different people because most of my life I was rejected, you know, I was bullied and many things. So, you know, I would paint a picture that everything was okay, but deep down on the inside, you know, I, there was some, I was the emptiness, there was a void that, that I couldn't fill. No matter how many drugs, no matter how much sex, no matter how much parties, no matter how much things I went through, none of that was able to fill the void in my heart. Being a pastor's kid, my dad always talked to me about God. So I knew about Jesus. He'd always sown seeds into my life. I was going in and out of church as a young kid. You know, the presence was kind of there, but there was not really, you know, the power and the power that you need to be set free. There was no deliverance. And eventually, I just left because I saw it as a religion. And I didn't see it as something real. Months later is when, I, when the whole situation happened, when I got arrested and everything happened. In jail, I actually had a supernatural encounter with the power of God and with the presence of God. And God actually used someone in jail to speak to me. And then we connected. He began to talk to me about Jesus. He began to talk to me about the cross. And at that moment, I closed my eyes and I actually had a closed eye vision of Jesus on the cross. And in that one second, I felt the fire just fill my whole body. Literally, it's just as if somebody put gasoline over you and just lit a match and just you just light on fire. And I just started weeping and weeping in the middle of jail uncontrollably. I was trying not to cry because I'm in jail. And all of a sudden, I just felt love, joy, peace all at the same time, something I have never felt in my entire life. And I've taken many drugs and done many, many things, and nothing compared to what I felt at that one moment. And in that one second, God did something for my life that I never could have done. I tried to quit drugs many, many times on my own, but all it took was just one encounter with the Spirit of God and my life was transformed forever. And it's been four years of my life that I have not turned back. I haven't touched anything since that day by the grace of God. You know, it was not in my own strength. I'm still clean today because of the power and presence of God. And I thank God that I am who I am today because I am who I am by His grace. And if it wasn't for Him, I wouldn't be here today. I would have probably been in jail for about 20 to 25 years, and I either could have been in jail or dead. Who knows? But God had mercy on my life. One of the best things for me and that brings so much joy into my heart is to know that God can use me to change somebody else's life. You know, because my whole, for most of my life, I served Satan. But now I can say that I serve God. And now I can share His love and it's just the best feeling to be used by God to heal the sick and to see a life changed, you know, that God would be able to use someone like me, who I would have never thought that I'd be the type of person to help others, you know, but God changed me. I want to welcome all the people that are watching by television. Welcome to the supernatural now. The Lord spoke to me to bring a new series on the power of God. And especially on the supernatural. As you know, my assignment, those that are new in the ministry, my assignment, I was called by God. I got a visitation from God when God, in an audible voice, spoke to me. And, and then he said, I called you to bring my supernatural power 
to this generation. This is what I've been doing for 25, 27 years. So I just want to bring something, and the Lord said, I want you to bring a fresh revelation on my power, on the supernatural to the church. Being in so many countries and so many places, coming into the power of God today seems to be either of the past because the church has learned to live without the power. And the reason is because the church, when it comes to the house of God, they don't have any expectation for the power of God to show up. They don't have any expectation for to do something, a miracle, healing, deliverance, or something in their life. So the war between, uh, God has spoke to me, and this, the Lord said, in the end time, you will see a war between the seeker-friendly church and the church that works in the supernatural. So we've been seeing that war now, and, and how the rising of the seeker-friendly church, because it's anti-power, it's anti-supernatural, it's anti-anointing, it's anti-gifts of the Spirit, it's anti-deliverance, it's anti-everything that have to do with the power and the Holy Spirit. There's no room for the Holy Spirit to move. The seeker-sensitive church is defined in one word, non-offensive. And why the supernatural is offensive? Because the supernatural is offensive to the, to the natural mind, to the carnal Christian. So as a result, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, as you see the condition of the church and tradition in religion, and you see a secret, sensitive church that don't want to be offensive, they don't want to offend anybody, you see the end. They have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In other words, that's the result. If you don't want to offend anybody, if you want to come to church and you don't want the power of God, that's the result. You want to have a form of God, but not a power. Deny the power. In other words, if you want to keep with your depression, if you want to keep in your issues and problems and sickness, just have a form of God. A form would not heal anybody, would not deliver anybody, would not heal anybody. Can I hear an amen on that? So that's the result of the church. And my question to you is this, has God changed? Has God changed being himself? Has he changed his mind about his promises? Okay, Hebrews 13, 8, you will see that God doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Say with me again. Come on, declare it. Lift your hands and declare it. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Without his power, we won't be able to meet the needs of men. It's impossible. If you become sick in, the, in your church, if you are oppressed and afflicted in your mind, how are you going to be healed? How are you going to be delivered? A psychiatrist we're not going to do that. I mean, uh, the doctors, I mean, can do that. I can do it myself without his power. So we have to understand that the times that we're living in are very unusual. The Lord said to me, it would be impossible to pastors, to pastor your people without my power. It would be impossible. So many people come to church and they're sick. And so in this condition, God is raising this remnant. And this remnant is full of power to meet the needs of people. So returning to the power of God, we have to understand two things. First, all God's power substantiates who he is. I'm going to say it again. All God's power substantiates who he is. This mystery to understand his power. So Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4. I want you to understand. And this is my, my session this morning. To bring to you the revelation of his power. Why we lack in power. There's no excuse for any believer to lack power. Amen. There's no excuse. Pastor, but I don't have power. Yes, you do. The thing is, you, you never understood the, the first principle that in order to understand and coming into the power of God, we need to understand that God is a supernatural being that has supernatural abilities and demands to be worshipped in the spirit. So uh, Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4, and his brightness was a delight and he had horns coming out of his hand. And there was hiding his power. In other words, there, 
He was hiding his power there in his hand. What is his power? Can we revelate? Can we go from his hand? Because the hand always represents power. Lift your hands and say, my hands carries the power. Come on, say it. I want you to believe it, not just in your head, but to understand because why the power was in his hand? Because the hands in the Bible always represent power. So from that hand, now let's revelate his power. So the first step in the first revelation is that God is a supernatural being that has supernatural abilities. He cannot be defined outside of being supernatural. The second thing is God's power is eternal and everlasting. His power can stand the test of time because it was before time. His power cannot be shaken. That's why our faith must be stand and established on the power of God. His power is endless, boundless, and limitless. So where do you limit God in your mind? Always there is a, there's a reason rising up when you have a crisis in front of you. Maybe it's finances, maybe your marriage, and this is what it comes to you. How? 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 That's reason shouting you and telling you you can't do it. You're going to remove the limits off of God. And you're going to start with your mind. It doesn't matter your condition. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what the doctor has said. It doesn't matter how painful things have been in the past. You need to remove the limits off of God. What are we struggling today? We're struggling here in the mind. Is it possible? How? I'm the black sheep of the family. It's too hard. I am this. I am that. I'm going to open your eyes that you remove the limits off of God. God. So I pray today that your eyes be open to the limitless power of God Almighty. Maybe you need a new house. Maybe you need a new job. Maybe you believe in for a great sum of money. Maybe you believe something that is beyond your reason. So I came to tell you, we got a God that is powerful, that is supernatural, and beyond reason. It doesn't matter who you're offending, believing big things in God. One, two, three, remove the limits off of God, off your mind. One, two, three, go. Oh, God Almighty, God Almighty, I say God Almighty, I'm going to say something very powerful. I want everybody to stand. Oh, God, I feel the power here. I feel the power here. Okay, let me tell you something. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. When that revelation comes into you, you can have a, a mountain ahead of you. Maybe you have a challenge before you, and this is what is going to happen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is powerful. The bigger the circumstance, the bigger God gets. The bigger the circumstance, the bigger the problem, the bigger the mountain, the bigger God gets. You need to shout to the mountain. You need to shout to your problem. You need to sell. We serve a limitless God. The doctor said it's cancer, and God said, I am bigger than cancer. You got a, a, a dead in your death cancellation, and then you, God said, the bigger the dead, the bigger I am. Oh! Touch your neighbor and tell him, the power is in my hands. Everything you touch will be blessed. Come on, take your seat. I'm going to start running right now. So, lift your hands before the Lord. Two revelations to understand and coming into the power of God and demonstrate the power. Two revelations. His power substantiates, meaning that says who God is. And who God is, He is a supernatural being that has supernatural abilities and He demands to be worshipped. Number two, His power is endless, limitless. 
His power is everlasting, eternal. That means we serve a God who knows no limits. So where is the limit? In your mind. Pastor, I am believing for the, for the transformation of my husband and my children. So, but you know where you're limiting God? In your mind. So God is about to visit your family. God is about to visit your, your wife and your children. He's about to visit. But the moment you limit God, he is bound. He can't go. And God says, as you pray and remove the limits off of me, I will touch your children. I will visit your children. I will touch your children. I will touch your body. Oh, say, my God, I feel the power here. Touch your neighbor and tell him, I feel the power here. So we understand. Okay, now, what's the reason God spoke to me to bring this new series on his power? First, to establish you in the power. You need to know the mysteries of his power. Because we need power every day. In our daily life, healing or deliverance or how many people have family members that they need the deliverance? That how many of you need a supernatural provision? How many of you need? So the circumstances this world is facing, it requires the power. You can't live Christian life with the form. You don't want a form of God. You want the real deal. So write this down. Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. So his name, what the name that reveals his power, his name that reveals his power. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am, I am your God and my God is no mighty. Your God and my God is not mighty. Is your God and my God is not mighty. All powerful, all mighty, all sufficient, all provider, all healer, all deliverer, all, 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 all remove the limits off of God. connections in her veins in her brain. Result of that, she had a stroke. That day in taking my daughter to eat breakfast and took her, and I took her to school, I came home and I was worshiping God. I was watching actual TBN that day. It was my day off from work. And I don't know what happened. I fell into a stroke that day. When my husband came home, he saw me convulsing in the floor. When I got to the hospital, they had to bring me back to life. And I was in a coma for eight days, literally because of three abnormal venous connections on the left side of my brain. One of them erupted, causing blood all over my brain. And they told the doctors on the second day, third day, she's never gonna be the same. She's gonna be paralyzed. She's not gonna be able to talk. She's not gonna be able to walk. Of course, my mentors came on the side of my bed and they started praying and they started fasting and they started worshiping God and they started casting the spirit of death out and they started speaking life to my brain and to my blood cells. Hey. So then I woke up after eight days, I got up with my hands up and I got up and I said, I gotta use the restroom and they were like, you can't get up, you're paralyzed. I was like, no, I'm not, I can get up. So I got up, I took off the ventilators, I got up in the bed and I ran and I danced. And that's what I did, I've been worshiping God. This is the kind of testimony why people from more than 100 nations come to God. What did the doctor say? They said I'm a miracle. They said I'm a okay. miracle. Touch, touch the people. She has the anointing. Okay. Go. The doctor said that I was going to die. So don't believe what man says. Believe what God says. I have the power to raise you up. And that's exactly what happened to me. He told me, rise, walk, pick up your bed. the love of God. Not even death. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Hey! Jesus is Give alive. Jesus the praise. Jesus is alive. I, 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 got I, I, I got a testimony. I will testimony. I will testimony. I will testimony.
Apostles Mount Another series of the power of God. It's been incredible to me. I received deep revelation of what it is to have the power of God and how to access it. And I was looking for a church where the power is and the power is here. I thank Apostle for this teaching. I thank him for opening my eyes to it and the importance of dying to self. The most that impacted me was that I must decrease in order for Jesus to increase. You have to die, not just 80%, 60%, but 100%, even 110, to receive that power, to receive that asset, to receive that blessing. This to me was an eye opener spiritually. This has taken me to another level of the spiritual realm. I thank God for this year. That was very powerful. I want you to get ready again, my friend, if you're watching and you're saying, I, am, I don't have any relationship or close relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you're watching at home and if you never received Jesus as your personal savior, I'm gonna ask you now and, and do an invitation for you to receive Jesus into your heart. I want you to repeat with me out loud if you're watching at home, in the hospital, maybe in jail, or, or in your office, if you never received Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say, say with me, Father God, repeat out loud. Father God, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I repent of all my sins. Say it, I repent with all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Amen and amen. If you did this prayer, Welcome to the family of God. And, and it's something so simple to believe in Jesus and have a relationship. Just repenting of your sin, believing uh, that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, is your Savior, and believe that God raised him from the dead. Thank you very much again. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to do a quick prayer. If you heal, if you're sick in your body, if you need deliverance in your mind and your emotions, I want you to stretch your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for every person that is watching. I rebuke every spirit of sickness and infirmity right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke it and I command every spirit to come out now in Jesus' name. And I release healing in your body. Father, I pray as I pray now, I speak deliverance on the people in their mind, depression, fear, anxiety. I set you free in Jesus' name now. Father, I thank you and I give you praise. Father, if there's people watching, they're missing organs in their bodies, I command new organs to come now. Create new organs in their body. In Jesus' name, Father, I give you praise. Receive it now. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for watching. This is Pastor Guillermo Maldonado with The Supernatural Now. God bless you. See you next time. Supernatural encounters are sweeping the nations, impacting lives with miracles, deliverance, and salvation. Our partners support medical outreaches, feeding the hungry, clothing the poor, and caring for those in desperate need. Through TV, radio, and social media broadcasts, over one billion people are being impacted by the supernatural power of God. You see a lot of kids now receiving toys, food. This is what I want you to see where your seed is going. So thank you very much for your support. These children would have no one to minister the love of God to them if it wasn't for this ministry. Thank you for supporting us. Que Dios los bendiga. Call 877-286-5585 or register online at kingjesusministry.org. God, he exists in three persons. God the Father, whom no man has seen. God the Son, who lived among us. And God the Holy Spirit, who is his transformative presence here on earth. Since the beginning of creation, to the baptism of Christ, to the birth of the church, at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit continues to minister today, establishing the will of the Father who sent Him. Yet His person has been overlooked, quenched by years of sin 
tradition, religion, and structures of men. Still, his ministry is essential to our development as believers, and he longs to have a divine encounter with all of us. essential aspects of the Holy Spirit and your relationship to Him. Be ready to experience a personal, intimate, and transformative encounter with the Holy Spirit. Divine Encounter with the Holy Spirit. Available now. TV, the new way for you to access the supernatural anywhere. With KingJesus.tv, you'll have access to our complete video library at any time. You'll be able to watch your favorite preachings, worship, conferences, and original programming as many times as you like and be continually renewed by the power and presence of God. Whether it's in your home, on your TV, on your computer, on the go, or on your favorite mobile device, there's a subscription plan for everyone. KingJesus.tv is your all-access pass to receive the supernatural revelation you want, when you want it, on virtually any device connected to the internet. You can choose the plan that best fits you and upgrade at any time. So why wait? Sign up for your free plan today and start watching. God bless you. I'm Apostle Guillermo Maldonado, and I want to take this time to invite you to come with us to Israel. November 27th through December the 6th. So you can come with us. Your life will be changed. You're going to go into the site places where you can see many things. But also, we're going to have a supernatural encounter. We separated some time for ministry time, for teaching, preaching, impartation. Your life will be changed. Not only go into Israel, but also to receive an impartation from God. Register now. God bless you. by the friends and partners of Apostle Guillermo Maldonado and King Jesus International Ministry.